everybody. Welcome to the Rock Consultant weekly webinar. For those of you who may be here for the first time, my name is Josh Gregory. I'm the Vice President of Education here at Route Consultant. Uh, if, you've, if you've never run into us before, our team ran hundreds of routes across the country in both PD and Lion Hall. And today we're here to help new buyers looking to get into the space for the first time and to help current contractors to help find efficiencies and find additional profitability in their businesses every day. So uh, for everybody else who's been here every week, welcome back. Uh, and again, whether you're brand new or you've been here for years, we still want this to be a place where we can come together, ask questions, learn, and make sure we're all on the same page as this industry changes every day and every week, which I'll, we'll go over some of that uh, in just a second. But before I go too much farther, I do have the uh, disclaimer to read as I do every week. So Route Consultant is not endorsed by and is not recommended by Federal Express Corporation, FedEx Ground, or Amazon. Route Consultant is not sponsored by, is not approved by, is not associated with, and has no connection whatsoever with Federal Express Corporation, FedEx Ground, or Amazon. Now, um, if you've been here before and you kind of know the flow of today, we're going to go over some updates and then we will open it up for peer Q&A at the end. So as I'm talking, whether it's questions about what we're going through today or anything on the industry as a whole, feel free to type those in. Just put those questions in the Q&A at the bottom and we will get to those at the end of today, um, but you can type those in whenever. Now, uh, for today, we're gonna talk through a couple of different things. Now, the the main focus is that today, you know, we work in an industry where I talk to contractors all the time who want to own every role in their business. Uh, and I get that desire to want to know everything and not relinquish any control because it's your business, uh, but no one is an expert at everything. And really, there are so many opportunities to add value across your business by improving that back office. And it doesn't always mean that you have to do it yourself. So we're going to go through uh, what you have to have, what's nice to have, and kind of talk through some advice there in a few different areas of your back office. But before we get to that, we do have a couple of critical updates that we want to go through around the FedEx integration with Express that uh, is happening. And, and in particular, some tactical things you need to do as a contractor by June 1st or on June 1st that we'll go through in a second. Uh, and to help with that conversation, we've brought Alex Froome back on. Uh, and Alex is a line haul contractor who operates runs across the country. Uh, and he knows everything about what we're going to be talking about and is going to be going through some of these same pain points that you all will when it comes to this express overlap and integration. So Alex, why don't you say hi and then we'll go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. All right. So, so Alex, I know there's a couple of things happening the next week and or over the next two weeks. So yeah. can I walk through what are the things that you, some people may have heard of some of it, but FedEx is coming out with these every day. Yeah. So um, everybody should be paying attention to what's on my ground biz. Um, if you're not familiar and if you're new to the space, there are two websites that, Fed, uh, that FedEx operates. One is my biz account which is where you get your settlement statements. That's where your contract is located. That's where you get a lot of information about your availability and your service score, your points, stuff like that. The other one is My Ground Biz, uh, which FedEx will usually call MGB as opposed to MGBA. Uh, on MGB or My Ground Biz is where they release news items as well as have a number of drop-down menus talking about vendors, operations, safety. There's a facility directory. There's a line hall. Actually, it's, sorry, there's a network map on there. Um, that network map is getting updated as of June 1st. So just be aware of that too. But that's where a lot of information is. So you should be checking um, MGB. I usually check it two to three times a week. Right now I am checking it daily. And sometimes I'm checking it multiple times during a day because there's so much information that is getting dropped um, on line hall lap or on P&D contractors laps as we approach this June 1st drop down date, uh, drop dead date to integrate and convert over from federal, uh, for FedEx ground to Federal Express Corporation. Um, so for contract, for TSPs, what we need to be doing. So right now we need to be switching all our tractors over to saying, Federal, uh, the vehicle is operated by Federal Express Corporation instead of being operated by um, FedEx Ground. So, and if you do that and submit proof of those pictures to uh, FedEx, to your dispatcher, uh, to your admin, to your senior line hall manager, FedEx is actually going to pay you $100 per tractor. Okay. And 
more than likely your line haul manager is reaching out to you and saying, hey, I don't have tractor 1000, you know, 157, 157, you know, why isn't it, have you submitted? And more than likely you've already submitted it, but if not, go ahead and make sure that you get those pictures to the senior line haul manager. One, that means that your tractor can dispatch on June 1st and two, you get the hundred dollar incentive. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but I never turn away free money. Uh, the other things that you need to do um, on June 1st, not before, but on June 1st, you need to have new cap cards in your tractor that no longer say FedEx ground, but they say Federal Express Corporation. Uh, FedEx is busily printing these out, getting them down to all the uh, terminals and stations, and then going to be providing them to you. So your managers, your BCs, or yourself are going to have to go around and put this into each of your tractors. Um, you're going to be getting new IFTA stickers. Okay, so FedEx Ground did their IFTA through Pennsylvania. Federal Express Corporation is going to be doing its IFTA through Tennessee. So we need to peel off or, you know, what some contractors do is they'll actually tape the old IFTA sticker or the new IFTA sticker onto the old IFTA sticker. But you need to peel off the Pennsylvania IFTA uh, sticker and you need to put on the new uh, Tennessee IFTA sticker. And you need to do this on June 1st. And by extension, you need to pull out the IFTA license from Pennsylvania out of your cap, uh, out of your vehicle binder and put in the Tennessee IFTA license into your vehicle binder. Um, you're going to need to have new insurance cards, your personal non-trucking general liability insurance cards. They need to list Federal Express Corporation as the additional insured, not FedEx ground. Um, you need to have uh, on June 1st specifically, you need to update your ELD to show that uh, you're operating under the Federal Express Corporation DOT number. Um, you need to update your Connecticut Highway use permits. Uh, there is a, uh, and you need to pull out the old ones. Um, you need to remove the New York um, Highway use permit because the highway use permit that we currently have in there is for FedEx ground, um, but it's a sub-license of Federal Express Corporations. So you need to maintain that there and make sure that you maintain the New York hut sticker on your truck. Um, you need to put in a new statement of lease, which you can get from MGBA. Um, and then you're gonna need to download the new fleet insurance cards from Federal Express Corporation on MGB to have those in your tractor instead of from FedEx ground. Yeah, so that's a lot. <laughs> uh, and the way that these get dropped are, and are getting dropped in my ground biz is there are one-off articles. It's like it's one at a time for most of these. It's not a, a comprehensive list. So it's really important that you're doing everything you can to keep track of every single one of these. You can, you can use that list that Alex just uh, rattled out as kind of your, at least for now list. But, you know, some of these have dropped like yesterday, today. The these two of them dropped today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it is something where we, that is the list for what you need right now, but I would not be surprised if there's three or four more things that come up between now and June 1st. So it is really critical that you don't miss the mark on this. Some terminal managers are going to be really good about reminding everybody to do every single one of these things. And some are not, uh, and some, some might just enjoy coming after you when you don't do things on June 2nd. So uh, yeah. prepared. I would yeah. say in my experience, the senior line hall managers and the hubs are going to be really all over this. Okay. Where you're probably going to run into some faults or some mistakes is if you're in a station, the stations are not going to, I mean, they're all focused on P and D. They're going to be looking at those 200 or 300 delivery vans that leave the doors on that station on a daily basis and not maybe be aware of the things that line hall need. And there are items that are very specific to line hall as opposed to um, your delivery vans, like cap cards is gonna be one of them. Um, so those are things, and the IFTA stickers are gonna be the other ones. So those are the two big things that you need to be focused on. Um, I have talked to FedEx. Uh, I actually just got off a call with them today, suggesting that they put out a comprehensive list. Um, BDS is, is actually, I don't even know, I can't remember what, I think they're, Business solutions, right? Business solutions relate uh, managers. So fees in it anymore? Uh, yeah, but they they're just changing that name. That, that might be June first too. <laughs> yeah, I think it's June first. But the business development is coming out with a comprehensive list that they're going to um, have on MGB 
Um, so I, I made that recommendation to FedEx. They acknowledge that that's something that a lot of other contractors have requested and they're going to put it together. Uh, it's not out yet, but that's something that they're working on. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully like it would be in their best interest and all of our best interest that that is an easy process for it, at least as clear as it can be <laughs> to make that. Yeah, because it's it's going to be difficult regardless. Oh, and guys, just remember, Memorial Day is coming up. So whereas P&D might have a holiday on Memorial Day, Linehold does not, okay? We run on all federal holidays, um, except for generally Christmas and New Year's. Um, so we will be operating. FedEx does pay incentive pay for those days. Um, so it's kind of a it's kind of nice. You get to pay your drivers, you know, whatever the incentive pay is. I don't know what it is right now. I haven't looked, uh, honestly. Um, what I typically do in my business is I'll pat, I'll give them a hundred dollar bonus for working on uh, for being available to work even if they don't it's just a holiday bonus for one of the holidays that FedEx makes us work on and then I'll give them the incentive pay as well um, and just so everybody's on the same sheet of music the the holidays that FedEx does not recognize um, that they pay out incentive pay for are Memorial Day the Fourth of July Labor Day um, Thanksgiving. Um, and then, you know, in the advent that they do dispatch you, then there is incentive pay for Christmas and New Year's as well. But FedEx really doesn't like to dispatch people on Christmas and New Year's. It's just a very dangerous time to be on the road. Um, they try to limit as much as possible um, uh, to being on the road when it's um, when the National Highway Safety Administration says it's the most dangerous times to be on the road for pedestrians and truckers. Yeah. Yeah, so the, lots of things to consider there uh, and things to stay on top of. So if you are a current contractor, the, you know, these are just a couple of the things in the next couple of weeks that we want to make sure you're all prepared for. Uh, and hopefully you'll be some of the the part of the contractor base that actually knows what's going on there. You can expect some confusion and frustration on June 1st and the days following for a lot of the people that are not ready or have done some of these things, but not others. So Try to be in the informed uh, majority where you don't have any problems. Your frustration is just doing it, but you've already at least done all the things. <laughs> yeah, and if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or Josh. Uh, Josh knows how to get a hold of me. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, and we can walk you through it. We can walk you through how to change your DOT number on the on your Omnitrack. track. So all those things we can help you out with. Yeah, yeah, definitely can. And, and there's going to be a lot of unique things depending on the vendors you're using as to what that looks like. So speaking of vendors, <laughs> what we wanted to talk about uh, beyond that today is, you know, really thinking through uh, from the line hall perspective in particular, what are the things in your back office that you found a lot of value with and, and, and things that you would recommend or at least say is a category that you've decided is worth uh, not being something you own completely, or at least that you've partnered with people on, uh, you know, from time to time. So kind of take us through maybe some of the, the things that you have to have, and then we'll get some of the nice to haves. Definitely. Um, so let's start with uh, must have. Okay. So the three items that you must have that are part of the contract is you need to have an ELD in every single tractor. You need to have a vetter device in every single tractor, and you need to have a safety uh, training, monthly safety training provider. Okay, those are mandated by the contract. They're in the TSP. And if you go on to MGB and you do some searching, because it's not very easy to find, uh, you actually have to specifically search for ELD providers. You just can't go to the vendor page. Um, they're, they're listed there. Okay, so right now, the only two ELD providers that are authorized to use are Trimble and Omnitrax. If you're from the trucking industry, you'll be aware that there are probably a hundred different ELD providers out there. And a lot of them are very sophisticated and a lot of them operate on a driver's cell phone or on a tablet. Unfortunately, um, the only ones that FedEx allows us to utilize are Trimble and Omnitrax. Um, a lot of this has to do with the fact that we're operating under FedEx's DOT authority. So they need to have the ability to monitor our um, hours of service for our drivers and then report them up to the FMCSA. Um, so these two systems, they're able to push the API data for those hours of service to a system that FedEx utilizes that you know is probably in Cobalt or some other really ancient language that they can then manipulate and then do whatever they need to do and send off to the FMCSA. So Trimble, 
Omnitrax. If you're asking me, um, I don't have a preference between the two. I happen to use Omnitrax just because when I got into the business, that's what, you know, 85% of all contractors utilize. I don't, I don't have any skin in the game. You know, there are contractors that love Trimble. There are contractors that love Omnitrax. You know, either one is an option. There's only two. Uh, Vetter. Okay. Video event device recorder. Sorry. Vehicle event device recorder. Um, Every tractor needs to have this, okay? Whether or not it's on your A1 or if it's a um, it's a spare tractor or if it's a rental from Ryder or from Penske, every tractor needs to have this. You will uh, violate the safety provisions and the safety indemnification if you do not have a working vetter in your tractor. There are um, five or six different providers. Uh, Lytix and Ground Cloud are the two most commonly used. Um, and then there's Smart Witness, Smart Drive, Velocity Solutions, Nato, who I've never heard of, uh, but and Motive. Um, I would say that um, at the Line Hall Summit, you'll see Lytix and Ground Cloud. At the um, Expo, you'll see Lytix and Ground Cloud. Um, and in Orlando, you will see Lytix and Ground Cloud. So those be there'll be multiple opportunities for you to talk to them and learn about the different products. Um, there are very strong opinions among contractors about um, the different vetter options. Um, so definitely explore. Um, I am a Linux user, um, but I'm not saying that you should be a Linux user. It's just what works for my systems. Okay. Uh, safety. Um, every contractor generally comes in and because you buy your insurance initially through Marsh or Protective, you get to know impact solutions through Carrier's Edge. That is the our introduction to what safety training looks like. Um, outside of them, and once you decide to move beyond Marsh and use somebody else for your workers' comp, your non-trucking, and your general liability, and I definitely suggest that everybody shop out their workers' comp, your non-trucking, and your general liability insurance, because from time to time, you can save a significant amount of money um, by shopping it out. Um, and we can put you in touch with a number of different uh, insurance brokers out there who can help you out. Um, also, you can meet them at the expo or at the summit or in Orlando. Um, so definitely do this. But so the safety providers, there's advanced online solutions, there's BXS, there's e-truck biz, there's fleet response, there's ground cloud, impact solutions, instructional technologies, JJ Keller, uh, safety compliance solutions, safety forward, Smith systems, and the vehicle alliance group. Um, I have personally in my company used Impact Solutions when I first became a contractor. Um, it's a great system. I, I have nothing against it. Uh, I am very familiar with the Smith system. It is a very comprehensive um, safety program. If you are a bronze contractor or if you are a tier one contractor uh, in your safety results summary, I highly recommend you look at uh, the, the Smith systems. That is one way to get yourself pretty quickly moving back in the right direction. Um, I personally, right now, use Safety Forward. I really like the system. Um, but like I said, there are a lot of different systems out there. Um, definitely do your due diligence. Um, and it gives you a great understanding of what is out there. But this is something that all your drivers are required on a monthly basis to take their safety training. Yeah. Um, Josh, I know you guys are really familiar on the P and D side with safety. Do you have any comments on that, about any of those names? No, I'd say you're all you're you're on the right track for all of these. But I think you you did make a really important point there, which you know there are some that can provide you know maybe more robust levels of of safety service, and some of you will not need that much. Maybe you've got a good program internally. You've got a a manager who has a good safety track record and can help really help with the safety on the team. But especially with the metals program, if you know the areas of concern, that's a really good way to start to figure out, okay, obviously the team that I have or, or my skill set has led to some kind of deficiency or gap in one of these areas. And that might be one of the easiest ways to start to know, okay, I've got to invest more and maybe it doesn't come from me. Maybe I work with somebody who is an expert or has a ton of experience and has this program built out already. Uh, and, and a lot of times, um, you know, in the past, we didn't even know necessarily what our problems were. So as much as we don't love everything about the metals program, it is nice to at least have some some guidance on the areas that are areas of focus and knowing 
where FedEx is seeing gaps in your business and knowing where you can invest some time and money to fix it. And sometimes it is choosing a partner to help you fix it. Yeah, definitely. Um, now let's talk about nice to have programs. Okay. So if you're like me, uh, you're going to start off with somewhere between two and six routes and you're going to be drinking from the fire hose and thinking that you need to do everything. Okay. So when I start off in this business back in 2018, you know, I did everything on Excel. I was a big Excel guy. I wasn't a Google Sheets guy. I was an Excel guy, but I did my payroll in Excel. I tracked all my miles in Excel. I did all my recruiting in Excel. I mean, I was just, I had more Excel spreadsheets than you can know, you know, that I could know. I was, you know, one of those guys that needed to have a coffee mug to sell, you know, said that I was like a master in between the sheets or something like that. <laughs> um, I did a lot on Excel um, and I quickly learned, actually, my wife pointed out to me that she was going to divorce me and that I was a miserable son of a bitch and that it wasn't fun being, uh, you know, she didn't, you know, she didn't buy off on me starting up my own business just so, so I could be this kind of person. So I quickly learned that I needed some support. Now, these are all nice to haves, okay? You don't need to do, I mean, everybody needs to have some kind of software that you do your bookkeeping in, okay? I really, really recommend that you move away from Excel or Google Sheets and you do your 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 bookkeeping in a system like QuickBooks or something similar. I would say that probably 99% of all contractors, um, you know, when they're small, they use QuickBooks. As you grow bigger, um, you can look at doing NetSuite by Oracle. Uh, Microsoft has a, a, a system. I cannot think of it off the top of my head. I've looked at it. It is really powerful. I would say that until you get to about 10 to 15 million in revenue a year, you don't really need to be using either NetSuite by Oracle or Microsoft. At, once you get to that point, it's really powerful and it makes a lot, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, but you can get away with QuickBooks. I currently use QuickBooks. Uh, there is a lot of functionality to QuickBooks and just about 100% of every CPA out there knows how to get access to QuickBooks and, you know, set up your classes uh, appropriately and set up your architecture in there for you to be able to do your accounting um, and I do cash accounting. Um, okay, so let's move on beyond that. Okay, after that. You can do a lot in QuickBooks. I recommend using a payroll provider. I um, use Gusto, ADP, Paychex. Use a payroll provider because it will take a lot off your shoulders. QuickBooks can do payroll, but you're going to be doing a lot more work on trying to figure out, okay, what are the state and local taxes? What is withholding? How do I do garnishments? That's just stuff that you know these payroll providers do on a daily basis. And then if you want, um, a lot of them have FedEx discounts and they're really powerful. They can be a HR management tool. You can manage your employees in there. You can manage your I-9s in there. Um, you can do your benefits. Um, they can manage your benefit program through there, or you can just give them access to the benefit providers that you utilize and they can allocate um, your pay and your garnishments appropriately there. So really highly recommend looking at paychecks ADP or Gusto. Uh, my personal experience, I started off with Paychex. As I grew, I moved to ADP because I wanted some greater functionality. Um, I started off my 401k program for my company through Paychex, and now my 401k is managed by ADP. Um, so they're both very powerful. Um, they will both be, I believe they're both at the Expo. I think they're going to be at the Summit. They will both definitely be at the um, Orlando. Yeah, I'll jump into on the payroll side. Um, a lot of people who get into payroll problems are because they're doing it on their own. And you'll see FedEx now as a bunch of programs where if you end up, particularly in the P&D size where we saw a lot of this, but if you ended up in, in some kind of uh, audit where you were, the problem was your payroll, the main recommendation FedEx made is you have to get one of these vendors to work with because uh, you know that's the easiest way to solve a lot of the payroll issues you may have. So uh, most contractors are using one of these, just like Alex said, we've used a lot of those. We've used net checks, Paylocity. So there's different ones there that are all really good, but everything's better than spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, it doesn't matter who you use. They're all, you know, pluses and minuses to them. Um, they are all getting better uh, to handle the, the way FedEx does things. And I would say about six, seven years ago, they weren't very familiar about what does pay by the mile mean? Or what is, 
you know, what is the, you know, what is the hourly rate and, you know, you know, the way that FedEx pays and the way that contractors pay to reflect the way pay, FedEx compensates us is being, is being captured better by the different, um, by the different payroll vendors. So definitely highly recommend this. This is really important. Okay. So let's move away from that and let's talk about tools to make you uh, to step back and allow the company to work for you. And that's the real reason where I really push these software providers. Okay. If you want to grow your business, and I was just talking to this amazing individuals six years ago, he was a BC. Okay. This is a guy who operates out of, I'm not going to say his name because I don't have permission to, but he operates out on the West coast, but his story to me uh, is inspiring. He started off as a BC um, he got away from being a BC, started off with two trucks and grew his operation. He now runs 50 trucks in four different states. Okay. That's an amazing individual. He started off as a truck driver. Um, but, and he, you know, you know, moved his business and grew his business. And what gave him that flexibility is that, you know, as a BC, he was used to running, you know, 15, 20 trucks and he could do that. But when he wanted to run operations in multiple states and run them in different terminals and really understand what was going on in his business as he tried to grow, he needed to adopt a, a software system. OK, and those software su systems are really, really powerful. So the main ones out there right now are uh, you can use my ground force. Um, which was developed by Tim Goff, who's a former contractor. You have a uh, Ford Arrow that's um, um, developed by the husband of a contractor, Lee Muse. Uh, you have Holy Tech, which is operated by somebody who wasn't a contractor, but his friends and was, you know, kind of contracted by a contractor to develop a system to make his operations more flexible. Uh, you have E-Truck Biz, which I believe is ex-FedEx guys who work in that business. Then you have EBO Pro, um, and so those are the main soft back office software systems that give you a lot of flexibility. So depending on which ones, um, they give you the ability to do scheduling, maintenance tracking, real time visibility of where your tractors are. They can they can link into your Omni tracks. They can capture. They can help you and assist you with MMRs. They can do I, they can do IVMR reporting for you. Um, so they're really powerful tools. I happen to use one of them to do all my, um, I don't do my payroll anymore in an Excel spreadsheet. What I actually do is I download my um, my CSV file into one of these uh, software systems, and then they collect that data and allow me to manipulate it in such a way that I can then send out mileage reports to all my drivers. And then it just speeds up my process for me to do my payroll do my, make sure my per diems are correct, make sure that my PTO is correct, and then I can upload it into ADP. I'm an ADP user now. So I've set it up so I can upload uh, this payroll file into ADP and it speeds up the process. So I've saved probably a good four hours of my payroll by using the system. Um, my drivers, my managers use it to do scheduling. We track fuel efficiency. We look at maintenance. We do MMRs. So these are all really powerful systems. If you want, I can, you know, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to Josh or you can reach out to the, uh, the individuals. Um, they you know, they all have really robust websites that give you demos of what, how the products work. Um, they're all really powerful tools. Um, you know, depending on what you're looking for is, is really going to determine which one you want. Some of them are, uh, they're all, um, some are cheaper and some are more expensive, but it's really what you're looking for. Um, in a back office and in a middle office solution and what you want your managers to have access to is really the determinant about what you want to do there. And I think the the thing you should hear if you aren't using any of that is that basically all of those were built by contractors or people involved in the contracting space, which just goes to show how much of a need it was. Mm -hmm. If there's that many people who realize that this is a need that it has to be filled. And it's a gap that I don't see FedEx closing anytime soon with any internal technology. They might do some things to help a little bit, but it's it's a little bit, I don't really view uh, FedEx's technology capabilities there as uh, quick or market defining. I think it's adequate in, in some time. So really though, but like I, what you were saying about that BC is, is I think the experience of a lot of people in that you can get to a certain size and, but you'll start kind of tearing your hair out, spending so much time working 
that sometimes the only way you grow is by doing less, which is definitely kind of uh, some, it's hard for a lot of people to kind of scale back their own control, but a lot of these softwares really do a lot to improve your efficiency and the amount of time you have to spend on the business. And we're not talking huge profitability that you have to give up to, to take on these partners. They're, they well make their money uh, for you. <laughs> Yes, I mean these are these are software systems that are going to um, make you more powerful and allow you to be more dynamic. I mean, I have not been able to grow to the state I am and be able to run operations in three different states um, without doing this. So, this is uh, th these are really powerful tools, and I really recommend taking a look at them. Um, they'll be at the summit. They'll be at the expo. They'll be in Orlando. Um, if you want, reach out to Josh or myself, and I can actually do a more detailed deep dive um, into the different event, uh, pluses and minuses that I'm familiar with them, but they're all very powerful. Um, other nice things to have. Uh, Truck Spy does IVMRs. Um, they can also do um, MMRs for you, and they can link into your vetter, and you can do everything through them. Um, I use them for IVMRs. There are other um, third-party vendors for IVMRs. I just don't happen to be familiar with them. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. It saves me a lot of time and money uh, from having to chase down my drivers to get them to correct their handwritten IVMR. So um, if you're not aware, uh, on, a, on a weekly basis, we have to submit an individual vehicle mileage report to FedEx that shows all the state line miles that your driver has completed. Um, actually, the vehicle has completed the week prior. Um, Truck Spy and some of the other vendors, what they do is they just capture the data directly from um, your ELD provider, and they communicate that direct um, in in a format that FedEx wants, um, and so everything is just taken care of. And it's just trust me, you'll it'll save you. You know the reason why I'm bald was because five or six years ago I I was I pulled out my hair trying to chase down all my drivers to submit their IBMRs. Um, Whip around is another nice to have. Uh, some of the safety providers do the same functionality as Whip around. Uh, Safety Ford does it, but what Whip Around does, um, and actually I think Ford Arrow and My Ground Force also do uh, Whip Around um, or Whip Around like uh, functionality. But what it is is like when your driver does a pre-trip inspection, it it has a um, a pre-trip inspection on an app that you then are forced to take pictures of different components and parts of the pre-trip inspection process, and then um, provides you with a a DVIR. Um, following the pre-trip inspection and that post-trip inspection as well. Um, like I said, you can use Whip Around, you can use Forward Arrow, you can use My Ground Force, uh, for, uh, Safety Forward does it as well. So there are a lot of different ways to do this, but Whip Around is, uh, is a standalone and it's a very powerful technology. Definitely take a look at it on a website. Um, and then back office, um, I would say recruiting is the biggest one that you're going to want to offload. I hate I, I'm a terrible recruiter, okay? I acknowledge that I'm really good at finance. I'm really good at managing operations. I'm really good at, you know, a lot of things, you know, typing up um, advertisements to go on Indeed or ZipRecruiter, I am not good at. Um, and then cold calling these drivers after they say that they're are these prospective employees and say that they're interested and chasing them down and then, you know, moving them through first advantage. I understand the process. I know how to speed it up. I don't like doing it. That was like the one, the first thing I went and I offloaded was, you know, doing recruiting. So I used to use Bright Flag. Tony's phenomenal. You can go with Mitch at M3. Uh, I think uh, there's Jess, Jessica Meadows, there's Jen Parrish, or um, there are a lot of different uh, recruiting organizations out there. Um, definitely look at, you know, using one of them, um, but they can, they will take, they will save you a lot of time and energy and just, give you peace of mind. I mean, that is the biggest thing. Um, so definitely look at using a recruit, uh, offloading recruiting onto one of those um, and get them to, to handle the first advantage process for you. I don't do it anymore. I'm big enough now that I have an HR manager in house who does all my recruiting for me. Uh, we do our, we're, we're a huge user of Indeed that just happens to work in my markets. Other people say Facebook or Craigslist or ZipRecruiter work for them. Um, it all depends on the market that you're in. I just happen to use like Indeed. Um, then the last one is this company called DMG Go. And so DMG Go is a fractional back office for you. So they can 
they will uh, fractionally share a payroll uh, administrator for you. They will fractionally share a CFO for you. They will fractionally share an HR manager for you. They will fractionally share a controller for you. So all these different functionalities that you have, if you're not big enough, but you want to offload those things, they can handle it. So you give them their uh, instructions and you explain to them how you pay your drivers, they can do your payroll for you and upload it to the payroll provider of your choice. Um, you don't like managing driver management files or driver um, um, or FMCSA or FedEx requirements, they will give you a fractional HR manager to handle those things. Uh, CFO, um, they will give you a fractional CFO to give you financial reporting and do your books on a quarterly basis for you. So definitely look at DMG Go if you want to uh, do that. They're a very powerful and supportive architecture. There are a lot of others out there. Um, I, you know, just to give you an example, I hired a fractional CFO to revamp my QuickBooks and to, uh, to reorganize how I did my financial reporting for myself about four years ago. Uh, I used, I paid them $3,000 to do a bunch of work for me and then I moved off and I, I, you know, we still talk. I don't use her anymore. It's now she developed a system that I was able to incorporate and get my payroll specialist to handle for me. And I think that just highlights like, you know, these aren't always going to be something you have in every stage of your business. You know, you're going to evolve over time. There's going to be needs that you decide you don't need anymore or that you fill internally. Like like Alex said, he brought somebody on as an internal HR manager and recruiter. Um, and and that I, I think that just illustrates the way that this evolves. But the the really important thing is understanding your skill set. Uh, where you know you're not going to succeed. And if you don't have those resources internally, there is essentially going to be a vendor and a partner for any of those challenges you're having. And so whatever that challenge is, uh, if you don't know the right vendor to search for or the right partner necessarily, if you just reach out to us with the challenge, we can always make sure that you know who are the right partners to fill that gap because there is going to be someone and usually multiple someones. Yeah, I mean, I, I cannot tell you like, I mean, the nice thing about being our business is that you can hire people remotely to do a lot of the things that you need. You do not need somebody in the middle. I mean, if you're in New York City, you don't need to hire a payroll specialist in New York City. That would be ungodly costly. You could hire somebody in West Virginia to do it for you. So um, that's the thing to understand. And you can reach out to, you know, if you want to have somebody on your staff, like I have a full-time payroll specialist. She's actually my, she actually handles payroll specialty and controlling for me um, and bookkeeping and, and, uh, and the soft accounting. Um, and she works, she probably works about 16 to 20 hours a week for me. Okay. My HR manager, you know, I think of her as a full-time employee. I love her to death. She works 30 hours a week for me. So she's actually technically part-time and she works from home. She works from Kentucky. You know, I'm in Denver. She's in Kentucky. We talk, you know, by zoom or by actually we use teams uh, but we talk on a you know regular basis on teams. My payroll special is the same way. So you don't need to be in the same location. Just be flexible and understanding and be uh, knowledgeable. But the biggest thing is you need to be the CEO of your company, okay? Your job is to allocate capital and set direction for where you want to go. You have BCs who can handle you know, the day-to-day -day scheduling and the maintenance, and that's what they're for, okay? You don't want to be doing that. Your job is to figure out finances and allocate capital and figure out operations and understand how do I most effectively grow my business. And being able to handle that in any environment, uh, a lot of that is, you know, going to come down to your skills. But yeah, like Alex is saying, allocating capital, allocating resources in your business is should be one of your primary, if not your uh, primary objective at all times. Yeah. Um, perfect. Well, I think that's what we wanted to cover from a kind of a total vendor back office. And if you missed any of that at the beginning around some of the things that you need to do over the next couple of weeks uh, to get ready for the express integration, ask questions if you have them, or you can go back on YouTube later and watch it because it's really important if you are a current line hall contractor. Um, I've got a couple uh, a listing to go over and a couple of events to highlight. If anyone has any questions, now's the time to type them in, put them in the Q and a box at the bottom. Um, but the, the new listing that we have this week is in Northeastern New Jersey. It's two line hole runs at 515,000. 
Uh, this one does have a manager uh, and it does have two lease tractors that are included in the sale. Um, and the manager is full-time as well. So if you're looking over in the New Jersey area, that's kind of a, a really good starter size business in Lion Hall, uh, if that's the right part of the country for you. Uh, a couple of events to highlight. Uh, we have happy hours across the country. Um, the next one is actually June 4th. So a week from this coming Tuesday, and it's in Baltimore at Diamondback Brewing. So if you're in that part of the country and you want to come out and meet us, uh, it's free to attend. There's going to be food and drink there. We'll provide it. You can meet us, meet other contractors in the area. Uh, and so feel free to come out and join us uh, in Baltimore in a couple of weeks. Uh, we also do have the expo coming up. Alex has mentioned it a couple of times. It's the big contractor expo that we have uh, every year. And this one is in Dallas, the first week of August, where um, we are going to be releasing the, the sessions and the, the topics we'll be going over very soon. Uh, but the, the theme this year is fuel up. So both conversations around fuel and also conversations around how we can help you fuel up for the rest of the year and into next year with ideas, content, and ways that we can all make sure we're successful in this upcoming express integration. Uh, and that is completely free to attend that event. You just got to make sure that you get out there, get a hotel room. Uh, and those hotel blocks, we have a discounted hotel rate that will sell out. So if you're interested in that, just make sure you go ahead and register the event so that we know you're attending and then reserve that hotel room. Uh, last, if you are on here and you're a new investor and you're still trying to figure out if this is the right space for you, we do have new investor summits that we host throughout the year. Our next one is actually this Friday, so in two days. So if you happen to want to make it out to Nashville in two days, we do still have a couple of spots left. Uh, if there is anyone who wants to attend. Uh, and if you can't make it in two days, we've got one in June. But those are really designed as a way for you to finalize if this is the right space for you, kind of a crash course where we teach you as much as we can in a digital course and then follow it up with that in-person workshop to go through a bunch of different things, help you understand uh, any lingering questions that you have. And ideally at the end of it, help you decide whether or not FedEx is the right fit for you and whether or not Handy or line hall is the right way you want to go. Now, uh, other than that, those are those are all the kind of the main events coming up. We've got a full calendar on our website. If you want to see the rest of the year, we've got that all posted. Uh, we do have a couple of questions here in, in the Q&A. So uh, first one here from Daryl. So what would you say a typical day or week is like in the life of a BC for line hall? Sure. So um, I happen to have three BCs uh, for my three different locations. Um, they each manage about, uh, I would say a BC can typically manage about up to about 14 to 15 tractors or routes on their own where they, and, uh, before they start needing help. Um, you can probably afford a BC for your business around four tractors or four routes, um, typically around 11,000 miles a week or 10,000 miles a week is a good cutoff point. Um, and what you're looking for out of a BC is they are somebody that's going to manage your business um, day to day for you in your operations. OK, so understand that FedEx does most of the dispatching for you, most of the route collection, but they need to have somebody on the ground that so they can say, hey, the run is ready to go. Um, there are systems you utilize, but typically what my managers are doing is making sure that my drivers show up to work on the day. Um, they're doing their pre-trip inspections, so they're in the yard or on the tractor line, making sure the drivers are doing their pre-trip inspections, um, handling any kind of maintenance issues that might arise. So if a tractor has a flat tire, coordinating for that tire to get replaced, you know, switching drivers into new tractors, um, handling any kind of diversions or changes in scheduling. So if you happen to have a Chicago run and they don't have freight for the Chicago run, but they have a Rockford run, you know, your, your uh, FedEx dispatcher is going to call your BC and your BC is then going to be responsible for saying, OK, hey, Chicago driver, you're no longer going to Chicago. You're going to Rockford. Now, understand your driver might like that idea, might not like that idea. So then your BC is now becoming mommy and daddy to try to convince that driver to go to that location. Um, after he gets all the trucks out, um, if there's no maintenance that needs to be done, he's pretty much done until the trucks are starting to return. He just needs to be available by the phone to handle any kind of situations. Um, if there is maintenance, like my drive, my managers are running trucks to the shop, 
Um, they're taking trucks to go get washed. Uh, we have a relationship with uh, a company called Blue Beacon. They have happen to have wash set locations across the country. So we'll run our trucks twice a month through uh, the truck wash to get washed. So they look nice and white. FedEx seems to like that for some reason. I could never imagine why. Um, but so that, you know, and my drivers happen to like having or driving clean trucks. They take great pride in their vehicles. The nice, the better they look, the cleaner they tend to be inside. Um, and it just, you know, gets a spree de corps and improves their motivation and stuff like that. So they're handling those situations. Um, and then uh, they're doing other things like they're cutting, you know, they're, they're handling, um, getting supplies. So like my, you know, one of my tractors happens to be low on windshield wiper fluid or antifreeze or coolant or water, you know, they're, or they're refilling all those. They're making sure that all our trucks are constantly organized. So those are the kind of little things that they do during the day. And then when the vehicle comes back at night, they're back on the line, making sure everybody does their pre-trip inspections and make sure that they're, you know, our line is policed. All the vehicles look like they're tip top shape. They're all parked straight um, in the winter that they're all plugged in so that we don't burn, uh, that the vehicles don't have issues trying to start up in the next morning. So I happen to operate in areas where they need to have a uh, a heater cord um, so they can get plugged in. So they're taking care of all those little different things. Um, you know, if you're going through a period where you're hiring drivers, my drivers are doing, my managers handle their, um, the, the road tests. Um, they do remedial training. They do counseling or coaching based off of things that we identify uh, while reviewing the vetter videos. So if a driver is not driving with his seatbelt, well, my manager will counsel them that they need to wear their seatbelt. If they do it again a second time, you know what? My manager is actually going to ride in the vehicle with them and make sure that they're using their, their seatbelt at all times. Trust me, your drivers don't want to have that happen. Um, they're making sure, you know, so they're taking care of making sure that your operation is um, operating smoothly and handling anything that happens at the dispatch or at usually the line hall planner level. Um, when things move beyond the line hall planner level and move up to the senior line hall manager, that's where you as a as an AO gets involved. So, for example, we had a situation this past week where a run had been cut and my manager went to go talk to the senior planner. He didn't like what he had heard from the senior planner. So I talked to the senior planner. And when I didn't like what I had heard from the senior planner either, I then called the senior manager, uh, who's the senior planner's boss and said, hey, what's going on here? We had a conversation. We actually ended up making an adjustment to the run so it could run more smoothly um, and we wouldn't get cut and it's been running uh, smoothly ever since. So that's the kind of things that your manager is handling on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, some guys use their managers to do recruiting. Um, some guys use their managers to, to do payroll. I mean, it's all about how much you want to offload. I tend to keep the payroll and recruiting to other people in my company and use my managers specifically to do dispatching, maintenance, safety, and training. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many different hats that a manager can wear. Uh, and you're exactly right. It comes down to what you like to control as an AO, or at least what you want to want the BC to focus on. Uh, and it comes down to BC skill sets. There's going to be some people that are really good at some things and not others. And it's a you don't want to give them something they're horrible at just to, as a, a learning lesson. If, if they've got something they're really good at and that they can control and do well, and you can go to somebody else to outsource something that that manager can't do well, then that's probably the better answer. Now, my managers are typically, uh, all my managers happen to be on salary. Um, and managers are typically on salary. And then they get, um, I evaluate my, my managers on two function or two metrics, availability and service. Those are the functions that FedEx happens to evaluate me on. Um, sorry, I evaluate them on three, uh, availability, service, and safety. So um, those, are, those are the things that FedEx evaluates on me, and those are the things I evaluate them on. Um, I do give them compensation or I incentivize them to uh, be backup drivers. So on top of their salary, if they happen to run a, a run, they will get paid by the mile for that run. Um, and then uh, they get bonuses you know, for uh, outstanding performance or safe miles. Like if we do, depending on how many safe miles is how they get bonuses, or if we have low maintenance costs. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can skin that cat. Um, and and I think a follow up question here. I know it sounds like you pay your manager's salary. Are how do you pay your drivers typically? So uh, the majority of my drivers are paid by the mile. So 
FedEx compensates us by the mile. Um, in my viewpoint, is you want to try to keep that around a third of your your um, of your pay. So if you get paid, for example, a buck fifty a mile, then your driver should be making about fifty cents a mile. Um, but that's the kind of thought process you want to have in there. Uh, there is arguments and there are pluses and minuses, and you have to look at the cost of living in the area. Some people like to include your workers comp and your benefits and your taxes in that. Some people don't. I typically include my benefits in that calculation. I don't include workers comp. Um, and depending on the year and how well my company is operating and what my margins are, I will include my, I will include FICA or not include FICA. Um, I would really like to always include FICA. It doesn't always happen that way for me. So, um, but um, if you're doing a lot of spots, those drivers are typically paid by the spots or by the hour. Um, very few drivers are paid salary. Um, I would say that it usually resides to managerial positions. Yeah, I'd say vast majority of drivers are paid by the mile, but you're right. There's spots in some of the, maybe even if it's a really... Uh, not a very consistent run. They might be, you know, a mile rate with a guaranteed minimum. So there's yeah. certain kinds of things you can do there, but mileage is definitely preferred for all the kind of normal types of runs that contractors do. Yeah. I mean, my, my unassigned drivers, my, my wild, my unassigned drivers are actually paid a minute, a floor. So they're guaranteed a floor of miles. Um, and if they exceed that floor, they get, um, they get paid by the miles. Um, if they don't make that floor, obviously they get the floor. Um, and I, and I structure my floor as a number of miles per day. Um, and they have to show up to work that day to get that floor. And so what I do is I require them to come in and actually check in on Amitrax to qualify. Yeah. And then you can also say I had drivers that were available, uh, in case FedEx asks. Yeah. So, Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing any other questions come in though. Um, so I'll go ahead and call it here. Uh, Alex, thank you so much for both giving us kind of your insights on the back office, but, but also reminding everybody about the, uh, things that FedEx is sort of reminding them on that definitely have to be done in the next two weeks. Yeah, there's a lot, you know, stay on top of it. Look at MGB, you know, please reach out to Josh or reach out to me. We're, we're here to help you guys. Um, and Hey, if you're looking and you're worried about this business, look, I was here six years ago. I was scared. The jump, the leap, the step is not that great. You know, there's a lot of support out there. There are a lot of people who are willing to extend a hand and give you the support you need. This is a great business. I, you know, I love being a line hall TSP. Um, I love, you know, working with drivers on a daily basis. And I love the other contractors I work with. So definitely uh, take a hard look at this. This is a great business to be in. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Alex. And okay. thank you everybody who was on this week. We will see you all next week for our normal PD, two weeks for Lion Hall. Thanks, guys. See you guys.